let's pull up this, this subpoena. I don't think people have seen it. Although if you've been following the post-millennial or my episode from yesterday, is this it? No, that's Alberta. This is the subpoena. Okay, peeps, check this out. We're going to go through this only briefly because I just want to highlight. And by the way, I've gotten a subpoena as a, to testify. Long story short, I got a witness. I got a subpoena from a client, became a former client, was so in love with my legal services that the, the, the client insisted that I testify in their case on a motion that I drafted. Uh, totally improper and the court quashed it because you can't compel a lawyer to testify on a motion that they drafted. Uh, that's a story for another day that I might share, but uh, getting a subpoena is not fun. It's kind of scary. You get a bailiff, rings the doorbell, says, all right. It's like, it's like that scene in Back to the Future, except you know, not necessarily in the future, where this is amazing. How fast do the bots work? Um, getting a spin is not fun. And it's almost as creepy as in Back to the Future when Marty McFly, the car disappears, and the second the car disappears and leaves Marty back in 1955, this guy in a trench coat shows up and gives him a paper. It's not much uh, less spooky than that. But let's read this. Subpoena, by authority of the House of Representatives of the Congress of the United States of America, Stephen K. Bannon, care of Robert Costello Esquire, because Bannon, through counsel, the counsel accepted to uh, take service of the subpoena in lieu of Steve, which can be done when you coordinate, because Steve Bannon was so non-compliant with Congress that he agreed to be served through counsel. Okay, listen to this. So place of production. So to produce the things on the, identified on the attached schedule, wait till you see it by the date of October 7, and to testify at a deposition by October 14. Yada, 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 signed. Not sure. So we, they, there was an argument during the trial as to whether or not that was Benny Thompson's signature. It looks like it was. I think Bannon at one point tried to raise a procedural argument that the subpoena was not served with what they call a, a Schedule B or a Schedule 3B, which I think, still haven't found out the definitive answer, I think refers just to the sanctions for non-compliant, which could invalidate, you know, improper service invalidates the subpoena, but then they tried to argue that it wasn't necessarily, we couldn't tell if it was Benny Thompson's signature. He's the only person that had authority to sign this as chair of the committee, whatever. Made no difference. Okay, proof of service, all redacted, fine. This is the letter, the 117th Congress, select committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. Mr. Bannon, pursuant to the authorities set forth in House Resolution 503 and the rules of the House of Representatives, the Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol, hereby transmits a subpoena compelling you to produce the documents set forth in the accompanying schedule, yada, yada, yada. Okay. The Select Committee, we've read the House Resolution 503 and it's trolling the ocean floor broad uh, breadth. The Select Committee is investigating the facts, circumstances, and causes of the January 6th attacks and issues relating to the peaceful transfer of power in order to identify and evaluate lessons learned and to recommend to the House and its relevant committees the corrective laws, policies, procedures, rules, regulations, yada, yada, yada. And you know why they have to include that self-serving and I would argue wholly inaccurate paragraph. Congressional committees are only lawful if they have some valid legislative purpose. What better way to say we need to investigate this to determine if we need legislation in the future? Because obviously there was a lack of legislation to prosecute and persecute all of the Jan 6 defendants like they've been doing for the last two years or year and a half. Obviously they need to discuss what legislation might be required because they seem to be lacking in the persecution of the defendants already, picketing and parading, obstructing Congress, uh, trespass, assault. Conspiracy to commit sedition seems like all the legislation is already there, but the committee, knowing what it has to draft in order to make it lawful on its face, now well, we need to see if there's any corrective measures and legislative purposes for this committee so that we can go on a fishing expedition that would make Black Tip H a fishing channel, green with envy. Anybody who doesn't know Black Tip H, best fishing channel out there. 
The select committee has reason to believe that you have information relevant to understanding important activities that led to and informed informed the events on the Capitol. For example, you've been identified as president. We've read this was in the indictment. Let's look at the schedule, by the way. This is the schedule of just, you know, just some documents we're asking you to submit, 17 items, and then they define what documents mean. <laughs> um, okay, but let's just go back. Just 17 bullet points, people, it's not that much. And they have a very specific point in mind as to what they're looking for. Schedule. In accordance with the attached definitions and instructions, you, Stephen K. Bannon, are hereby required to produce all documents and communications in your possession, custody, and control, including any documents or communications stored or located on personal devices, in personal or campaign accounts, and or on personal or campaign applications, referring to relating to yada, yada, yada. If no date range is specified, it's April 1st to the present. Fine. Just take, we'll just go through, let's just pick five at random. Number two. Then President Trump's participation in the January 6, 2021 rally, including any communications with President Trump or any paid or unpaid attorney, advisor, aid, or assistance to President Trump relating to the nature, context, or content of President Trump's intended or actual remarks to those attending the January 6th rally. Executive privilege much, anybody? They want correspondence with then President, the executive, and Bannon. And not just that, by the way, including any communications with President Trump or any paid or unpaid attorney. I mean, Bannon's not the client, but are they asking for potentially solicitor, what would be governed by solicitor client correspondence or information between Trump's attorneys and Trump and what might have been communicated in the context of that relationship with Bannon? Just, just anything and everything. That's all we're asking for. Do it now. I love item five. The War Room podcast, insofar as at any time you communicated through it, statements referring to, referring or relating to efforts to contest the election results. They want to audit the War Room if they've talked about anything, a constitutional process, I might add, of contesting the election results or contesting certification. A constitutional process. In, in as much as you ever talked about it on your channel, on your show, on your podcast, wildly popular podcast, more popular than any of the committee hearings, more popular than any MSM, we want all of it. Any statements, anything, any, any notes, who's here, including planning for the January 6th rally, including all statements concerning its planning, objectives, purposes, or organization, messages, or sponsorship. Just <laughs> David Langford, I know David Langford's an attorney. And yes, he writes in caps, not because he's angry, because it, it, it's easier to read. It's preposterous. I and mean, we could go on. Your, uh, your presence, purpose, statements, and activities at a meeting at the Wheeler Hotel on January 5. Or the, what the hell does this even mean? Your purpose? Please, God, we're going to, what was your purpose there, January 5? What was the purpose for you speaking freely as per your First Amendment rights? Your communications with President Donald J. Trump concerning events on January 6, 2021, including but not limited to communications on December 30, 2020. We want your communications with the then president. And by the way, you're not allowed raising executive privilege. Listen to this. Anyone with whom you communicated by any means with respect to any aspect of the planning objectives, don't even know what that means, conduct, don't even know what that means, or participation in the January 6, 2021 rally, including but not limited to Boris Efstein, Epstein, Epstein, Kashyap Patel, and Ezra Cohen Watnick. I don't know who those people are. Anyone with whom you communicated by any means with respect to efforts, plans, or proposals to contest the 2020 presidential election results or delay. By the way, I think we've seen enough of this. By the way, do you remember uh, all of the videos of other Democrat politicians contesting certification once upon a time? Do you remember? We, we, we saw those videos. Can you imagine if anyone subpoenaed those politicians for any and all correspondence relating to their uh, contestation of the certification process? Viva, if they were truly trolling the depths, they would catch themselves, Nancy Pelosi and the other swamp creatures. Well, Deborah, they can't catch those creatures because they're not, they're not trolling for those creatures. I don't know if Ray Epps got this subpoena. 
did, did Ray Epps get a subpoena that looks like this? Because he was planning the events of January 6th. He was there on January 5th telling people what to do. He was there on January 6th corralling people to the Capitol. He was there behind the barricades on restricted grounds. Did, did he get one of these? I'd like to know who Ray Epps was talking with. I would love to see this subpoena issued to Ray Epps. Although if I were a lawyer on the committee and I wanted to draft it in what I think would be lawfully confined terms, I would, I would limit and maybe make it a little more specific, a little more specific and not just insanely broad. <sighs> that's, I mean, that, that, that's 17 ends. Any communications with Representative Scott Perry? Oh, they're asking, they're asking for his communications with other politicians now. Well, why not, why not subpoena Scott Perry? Oh, that's right. Because to subpoena a member of Congress would itself look too over the top. So don't subpoena Scott Perry. Subpoena someone else and ask for your communications with a politician. About any any communications with representatives Scott with representative Scott Perry and or other members of Congress about any of the foregoing topics. Hmm. Imagine what would happen if they actually just subpoenaed Scott. Imagine if they subpoenaed other members of Congress for any correspondence that they had about January 6th. This is a um Oh, any communication with Rudolph Giuliani? I always know him as Rudy. Rudolph just reminds me right away of Christmas. Right to Christmas. John Eastman, Michael Flynn, Jenna. Oh, Jenna Ellis, a lawyer. Sidney Powell, a lawyer. About any of the foregoing topics. Just a hey, uh, Bannon. Bend over, take your pants down, and let us look straight up your colon through your mouth. We're going to go. We're not stopping at the colon. We're going right up your lower intestines. Uh, and we're going to, we want to see the light of day coming out your mouth. That's the subpoena. Now, I don't know if they made a motion to quash that subpoena. Uh, I would be shocked if they didn't. I just don't know that, that question offhand. 